Hello, this is Ron Gerber. I'm excited to share with you my insights and advice on how you can successfully deploy AI in 2025 in your organization. Many years ago, I wrote a number of white papers under the branding, The Angel Beat. I'm now using that as the brand for my podcast, for my video blogs. I think you'll find my thoughts and comments in nine specific areas of great value. I'll also share with you how we as an organization and myself in particular can help you successfully deploy AI at your organization. The first thing I wanna mention is that you are already using a whole suite of automation and AI tools. These could be applications like optical character recognition for document processing, your phone system for interactive voice response, how do you deal with employee onboarding, tier one tech support. Many of these functions can be enhanced, eliminated, whatever term you want to use, by using a common AI engine and then customizing it for these needs. It offers you the advantage of much simpler support, much lower cost. This needs to be evaluated against purpose-built automation tools that already work in your environment. We can help you determine when you should use a general AI platform for these important applications and when you should stick with your existing solution. The world of AI is very much like a PC versus Mac world. There are walled gardens, open AI doesn't play nicely with Anthropic, uh, there's co-pilot solutions, there's Cohere. If you look at the world of technology in the past, there were established standards, x86, Voice over IP, where Cisco, Nortel, Avaya phones could all be compatible. Kubernetes is now an, a widely accepted standard. Linux works across SUSE or Red Hat. The problem is you don't have that same compatibility across all these rapidly evolving AI platforms. I encourage all of my clients to look at parallel development plans as, you, as you're doing proof of concept, because once you get on a pathway, it's very hard to change over the next three or five years. It could be something as difficult as converting from SAP to Oracle. One of the other options you need to think about is when do I purchase services, AI solutions directly from an open AI, from an Anthropic? When do I get them through one of the hyperscale providers? You see these logos here. Azure OpenAI services is offered by Microsoft through the Azure Cloud, whereas ChatGBT Enterprise is offered directly by OpenAI. I have a slight bias in encouraging clients to work through the existing hyperscalers because you get the advantages of their structure, you get the advantages of compliance. There's not really a big security risk as in the case of OpenAI, it's run on the Azure platform, so you know it's got a tremendous amount of security built in, what you have to help evaluate is the advantages of having direct communication with one of the AI platform suppliers and weigh that against the advantages of working with your current hyperscale provider who offers a whole suite of other services and solutions and can help you manage this one increasingly important application. There are many choices out there to power your AI solutions. It's not just LLM, large language models, they're small language models. You also have the opportunity now, as things are changing so fast, to get a foundation model that is tailored to a specific internal department, HR, finance, or a model that's designed for a specific industry, healthcare or finance. You have to evaluate the additional benefits of solutions that might save you time and effort in training a model for a specific use case versus the advantage of having a widely deployed platform that provides ease of administration. No black and white answer. We can help you make this comparison and then arrive at a well-informed decision. Data is so critically important to the world of AI one of the big concerns that organizations have is how do I protect my data? How is it being used? You have to remember that the big AI models are deploying literally hundreds of thousands of people who have to manually classify data to complement the automated process of that. 
you as the end user can also control how you use these models through techniques such as fine tuning and prompt engineering. The big thing I like to emphasize is you have to make sure your data is RAG compatible, which in simple terms means it's gonna be structured correctly to work with AI models. You just need to be very careful and think this through so you understand where the data is going, how it's being used, so your proprietary information doesn't get distributed into publicly available models, doesn't help your competitors train their models, or an analogous situation, if you've got some proprietary information, let's say you're a major financial institution, you don't want your data somehow getting into the public realm, and then a cyber criminal could then use that information to hack a bank's uh, or other financial network. So one of the big concerns, and it came up in the recent presidential election, is all the deep fakes out there. How do these AI models work? How do they create output? The key thing that I encourage everyone as you're deploying that is you must have transparency. You must know how the model works. If you simply accept its results as a black box, you may run into problems because the output of that black box will change over time. You have to be very careful and monitor for hallucinations, which is a term for output of AI systems that may change over time. You also have to be concerned about deep fakes, which is through nefarious cyber criminal activities. They're using the AI models to create false or malicious content. In both cases, you need human oversight, human intervention, and you need to carefully monitor the output of those systems to ensure that they are safe and you're not falling victim to some unintended consequences of deploying AI. Everyone is aware of the tremendous stock price increase in NVIDIA, their sales, and how much money AWS, Google, Microsoft are spending on expanding their data centers. It's in the hundreds of billions of dollars, probably over a few years in the trillions. The thing you wanna be aware of is that the hyperscalers are gonna to wanna to return on that investment. They're gonna get it from you, the end user. So you have to be careful on how you are deploying solutions. And you know there's a term FinOps, now there's in AI ops that you need to be aware of to control your spending here. There are a couple of ideas that I work with organizations on. Maybe you don't need the output, the results of your AI modeling instantaneously. Instead of using expensive NVIDIA chipsets and prioritizing the processing of your applications, you wait a few hours and you get the results. Maybe they're run in Intel chipsets or maybe they're just run within 24 hours. It's interesting because it's almost like batch processing of mainframe applications. Another idea that organizations do is let me buy some of these AI PCs and do more of our AI work that again, isn't so time sensitive at the endpoint where quite honestly, you're not even relying upon the very expensive hyperscale processing done by the Microsofts and AWS and Googles of the world. We can help evaluate your workloads and determine what's the most cost-effective strategy by balancing the business needs against the cost of technology processing. HR is going to be awfully busy with AI. It's going to have a huge impact. Clearly, AI is going to eliminate jobs. Clearly, AI is going to create jobs. So there's going to be a huge demand for training, retraining of your employees. This covers all aspects of your company from the C-suite down to the factory floor. When you're thinking about your AI initiatives, you have to look at three things. AI is gonna make everyone's job more efficient and they can save money. Beyond that, they might be able to make everyone's jobs more effective and provide greater analysis and insights so they can do a better job. In all cases, there are opportunities that need to be carefully thought out. Your people remain your biggest asset I don't think AI is changing that anytime soon, but you need to work with them so you could have them successfully embrace AI and help your company continue to thrive. Many cyber criminals are already using AI and the least trained cyber criminals can now do tremendous amounts of damage because you don't have to be so smart because AI can do it for you. So you could have 
AI create even more powerful distributed denial service of attacks, enhanced ransomware. You have to be aware that cyber criminals are absolutely using this and it's a new threat vector. At the same time, your security operations center, your cyber security analyst can use AI and ensure that they're not missing alerts. If you look at some of the unfortunate hacks, uh, the breaches in the past, there were known remedies, but manual processing delayed the implementation of those fixes. With AI, you can make your security staff more secure. So just be aware of it. It's just a new computing paradigm. You have to stay one step ahead of the criminals because you're both using a lot of the same tools. We can help guide you in that. In general, when you look at all these nine initiatives, keep in mind that Ron Gerber, me, and my angel beat organization can help. We're excited about the future. As you can see here in this picture, we're excited about getting back on the road, running hybrid events, offering an opportunity to interact directly with end users, bringing together the world's biggest, most powerful companies to help the Angel League community thrive as an organization and as individuals. You know, a couple of ideas and things that we've done for organizations. First, we can do private and custom events. That's really powerful because there's so much going on. IT professionals, HR people, it's really tricky trying to go through all the logistical hassles of lining up speakers, understanding the business, the technical issues that organizations are facing, just hire Angel Bee. We'll do all the legwork behind the scenes, get the right speakers under your direction to all come together. Then you in IT or other departments can bring together the entire organization. We can do a workshop that addresses issues from the C-suite down to upper management, mid-management, and make everyone look like stars. Really beneficial, glad to do it. We do it all the time for our public events. Many organizations must create an AI risk management framework. It's really labor intensive. It requires a lot of documentation. It's often required by your general counsel, by the corporation that provides your cyber insurance. Let us do the detailed documentation. Let us prepare the report that can ensure that you and the IT organization and other groups can focus on new initiatives under your direction, we can do all the legwork and create the document that organizations need, especially if you're medium and larger. I can also serve as your virtual AI officer. This is a new area. It's very tricky to have the right person who can understand the technology, the use cases, what different platforms offer, and speak intelligently amongst all the different entities who are all have their hands involved with AI initiatives. Let me do that, or there may be special projects involved. Remember, the expertise that I personally bring, again, some of these things, uh, my team at AngelBee can help you run custom events. I can personally add value because I've worked in technology for so many years. I have incredibly strong relationships with Microsoft, AWS, Google, now working with XAI, OpenAI, Anthropic. We know all the players. And more importantly, we know your peers who are dealing with similar issues. And with my background, you can see it on my LinkedIn. I went to Princeton in engineering. I have a Harvard MBA. I've got the credibility, not just within the world of technology, but amongst your legal and general counsel staff, your CFO, your treasurer, your financial organization. And, and your board of directors. Thanks for your time and listening to me. Glad to help. You can see my contact in, in information is listed there to the right. I look forward to working with you. Glad to help. Thank you very much.